<laughs> so mm-hmm. let me let me circle back with them uh and uh, let me see if they ha- if they have any you know uh, further interest in there um i'll let you know no please yeah you know like i said in our last meeting right uh, i want to make sure that we don't want it to do any marketing we want it to grow like you know grow like a grassroot meaning whoever have joined here they will go and talk and then bring people whoever are interested to join and learn and that's why i wanted that's how i wanted it to grow for next 2 to 3 months right and maybe on february once we have a base team uh, all of us together then we can launch this in a in a bigger way right so that's the thought process so um good so rohit were you able to get someone uh, to join us today the same question to kas miki parthiban uh, let's yeah, wait for, uh, let's wait for another 5 minutes yeah sure we can do that but uh, you know people not joining for 7 minutes uh, Mm, interesting but you know what i don't want to waste our time the people who are whoever joins let them join let's um it's it's that we are together let's learn something together uh yeah, have a, yeah go ahead miki uh i did the purpose that's a two talent yeah um, uh, right after our touch top of project call yesterday uh he said he's uh, interested but uh, because he has classes right now on saturday mornings So maybe in the future he will join. Who? Who? Ah, uh, talent. You know, and I could start a tech startup project. Like, who was yeah. showing you the um, demo yesterday? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. But yeah, you know, I want to make sure that we grow this uh, as a as a grassroots, right? Because I'm very interested. It's very easy to market and get the people in, right? But uh, I don't want to go through the easy route. Uh, I want to make sure that. we learn together and we spread this news and we grow like a grassroots movement and let's uh, you know get started i have put together something to discuss today um, pathiban do you have something for anyone else has uh, anything else uh, to discuss uh, today and i put a large uh, attendance in the chat for that to week who joined okay so we have myself uh, karthik myself uh, okay karthik last time joined he didn't join today shubham he didn't join miki is there krupali is not uh, um sayed he didn't join jimmy didn't join raghav is joined patiman so we are basically missing from last uh, uh, meeting to now uh, shubham i think he will join maybe uh, rohit because of the personal reason right he couldn't join today it's not uh, <clears throat> sir like he is traveling and he is driving uh, right now okay. so i'm on got his behalf kind of got it got it all right so you said you are like he yeah. wants me to join and uh, like uh, make things understand okay so i'll just explain him everything like whatever we discuss here okay got it perfect all right so this is good so let, let's get started um so we have vj vj do you want to unmute yourself introduce yourself please before we start so ravit one more uh, kind request for you to unmute and introduce yourself please hello i am vinod hey, i vinod. work as a, i work as a business analyst in one of the health tech companies from which company uh, please health it company i actually i work for infosys yeah. so i am interested in learning new things and have attended couple of uh, courses or meetings of testopper and keenly look forward to this one thank you thank you venod uh, for joining so ravit last uh, request to you please if you could unmute and uh, introduce yourself Suravit Promrak let me check in linkedin 
Actually, he was the first person like uh, when I when I joined, he was the first person to join. I have seen him join in this team meeting. And yeah. Why is not responding? Yeah, but he has to respond, right? Um, see, as per the Brampton laws, you know, we, you know, the, after COVID, right? If we don't know anyone who is in the call, it's better to, ex, you know, uh, eject them from the call. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, bad things, and we have been given guidance to what to do, do and don'ts, right? If people don't uh, respond and don't speak, at least a, a text message, right? He can at least. Type yeah, I was just thinking to like a give a, give him a call. Like he will get a like a notification or some time of some kind of ringtone he will get. Yeah, I don't know from here how to do that though. Okay, so you know, as per uh, the disclaimers in the policy, I have to eject him. Uh, I can't uh, keep him in the call. Uh, apologies, right? Either he has to uh, text or or speak. Uh, if he doesn't do, I have to uh, eject him. Right? Uh, no personal feelings, Sorabit, but it's just as per the you know guidance. Okay, thank you. All right. Perfect. So let's get started. I think whoever uh, are here, uh, we are good to start. So Partiban, you are supposed to put together something. Did you put together something? Yes, Kadar. I have put something called um, 5G basics just to okay. set a stage on what is 5G. Why do, why do we do something with 5G and what is this 5G all about? I have put some basics about it. Um, it talks about what are the high level requirements, what are the different use cases. Then I'm just flashing the uh, 3GPP architecture here. I, I'm just going to stop at that point. I'm not going to talk about different network functions and components. Maybe it's a 10 to 15 minute, um, what do you okay. say, discussion. Yeah. Good, 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 good. So, um, you know, what we will do today is, um, you know, the idea of our study group today is we wanted to really become strong in the, in the 5G technology, right? So in order to become strong in the 5G technology, there are some uh, basics that we need to know. That's the most most important thing. And my goal for next um, three meetings is to basically, I mean, we finished the first one and today is our second one. And the third one is going to be, you know, in two weeks, at least for this year, right? Um, uh, we want to make sure that we set our foundation really strong together as a team. So that's the uh, thought process. And um, let's get started, right? So what what we will do now is, we will kind of have a little bit of refresher what we learned last time together. And um, and then what we will do is we will learn something new things together today and try to connect all the different dots, how it is all coming together for 5G right uh, in the in the cellular network. So that's the thought process. Is that uh, is that uh, looking good, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. So, you know what? I'm going to kind of. Um, let me see. I will move this to another monitor and stop sharing here. And then share my another monitor. So my head will turn left and right because I'm going to have this other monitor shared. Where is it? OK. Can you see this? Now, can you see my monitor? Yes, yes. Awesome. Yep, yes, yes. The reason I want to do that is uh, when I'm speaking, I want to see your faces, right? So if you are comfortable, please uh, feel free to unmute yourself because it's a study group, right? Um, I want to make sure that we are kind of connecting ourselves well here. So can you guys are... zoom that PPT? I mean, uh, zoom that PPT, this PPT page. Yeah. Just um, just move the slider. I mean, on the lower side, so that it get uh, zoomed. Yeah, you should see it now, right? Because I'll yeah. be doing yeah, the full. I have not done the full screen. So yeah, guys, much, much better. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, please, please. Next time, uh, prepare yourself to come on the video, right? Uh, I want to see you guys uh, from next time. I would prefer if you can actually do that this time. <laughs> Here we know. Thank you. So just a refresher, uh, those uh, who did not um, uh, attend the last session, you can always, uh, there is a private uh, 
you know, YouTube link is there. Um, Mickey and uh, some of the team members is going to send it out to you all. Um, I think they would have sent it out already to you all, if I'm not wrong. Right. Uh, so you can always go and refer what we discussed in our last meeting. I just wanted to slash, uh, you know, flash the slide so you can get some kind of an understanding as to what we discussed with a very basic high level uh, uh, input right? So we kind of started with understanding in those olden days, um, you know, some of the terms that was used in the telecom, uh, right? Switching, transmission and signaling and uh, switching is nothing but, you know, have a something switch and connect the, the one that's coming inside to going outside, right? So in olden days, when when people called, there was in the central office, there was guys who were sitting and, and they were taking the wire from the incoming call taking the wire to the outgoing call and then connecting both the things so both the people can talk, right? So that's nothing but switch. Uh, nowadays, the routers and a lot of new things came into the picture. Then it's not only about the switching, right? Uh, from the switching to the user, to the network, there's a wire running all the way back and forth. So, you know, that's nothing but the transmission. And the signaling is another important concept that we learned together. What it, what it means is you don't want it to occupy the complete resources um, when the other person has not picked up the phone, right? If I'm going to call Parthiban and the Parthiban's phone is ringing and after he picks up the phone, then I can establish a dedicated channel to speak, right? My voice and he can he uh, hear my voice and I can hear his voice and things like that. But I don't want to um, have the dedicated channel uh, um, fixed, right? Uh, um, before he picks up the call. So the concept came... Uh, what can I do? Can I build a separate network uh, to do the signaling in a in a more you know resource sharing manner? Uh, and once Partiban picks up the call, then I can establish the real voice connection so that we both can speak with each other, right? So that's when the new thing called signaling came into the picture. It used to be in-band signaling, meaning the signaling used to go in the same wire, and then they splitted it out-band. The signaling went in a different network and once the call is established then the voice connection was established right this is the very basic thing that we discussed in our last um, session and then we talked about pstm network right How, what happens right uh, the, the most important thing in this slide you need to remember is the signaling happens through the ss7 network right before it was called as a channel associated signaling common channel signaling but for you to kind of understand don't worry about the acronyms what you need to understand is the signaling goes in the top uh, separate network and once party one picks up the phone the actual media is connected through the trunking and things like that so in the pscn network they had the different levels of switches right so you have your phone at home the wired pstn phone then it goes to the local distribution center and then go local central office and all the residents are connected to the local central office and if you wanted to make a call to your friend who lives in the same zone the central office will connect but if he's living in another zone, which is managed by another central office, so one level above you have to go. So olden days, it was called as like, you know, class five, class four, class three, class two, class one, class one switches that connects the international calls, right? So that's the most important thing that you need to understand. The whole network architecture is layered in such a way that it can connect uh, two people wherever that you live. And then the second most important thing is the separation of the signaling and the, um, you know, the actual voice. In nowadays, it's called as a control plane and user plane. Why I'm stressing these things and I'm explaining these things are these are all going to come to the 5G. You will see that today. OK. Uh, so that's the PSTN network. Then we talked about data network, right? Uh, how the data network evolved from the olden days, IBM to everything became IP. Nowadays, everything is IP. Whether it is Amazon, uh, you cloud, you do whatever, everything is IP, right? So from the normal computer, you know, I remember those days when I was doing 25 years, 26, seven years in the labs, I used to just have a dumb monitor, right? A white monitor this big, and then uh, the keyboards. You know, yeah, you guys are a little bit young, you won't probably see, would have seen that. And then all the processing, maybe Parthiban would have seen it, right? I've worked on that. All the processing happens uh, behind the scene in the central server and you your terminal is just a dumb terminal, right? That's how, and we used it's to write- It's called mainframe, uh, right? Yeah, mainframe, you know, now when we worked, it was not mainframe, it was like mini, uh, even it was like a personal computer, from, 
uh, at that time, but it was the dump terminal were dumped. So everything in Windows they uh, yeah in MS DOS. So Windows they had uh, yeah not MS DOS. Windows had a concept of terminal and server where terminals will be dump where you can actually connect to the actual server and your processing happens in your server and it was a period called windows nt server wa version was okay. there actually from if the you windows remember we yeah. used the unix, unix before uh, yeah that's before that's yeah. before windows yeah. yeah we used pascal pascal you guys remember mm. pascal mm. programming yeah it, those are because you're not very, a very, very of cheating on this right you are too young to no, I, I, learned, I learned pascal in my engineering but uh, wow. I, I never Cobol. imagined like where the yeah I I too learned Cobol yeah Co uh, Cobol and Pascal Pascal. Cobol and everything we used to do was on the DOS operating system right uh, and we do everything using VI editors programming there was no editors nowadays which can give you help for the programming and all you got to remember and you got to type and you got to do things yeah so you know from then to now it's you know now right uh, it's cloud everything happens in the edge blah 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 we'll talk about it but the main point here is that this is how the data network evolved in the organization in the enterprise in the educational setup you have computers connected to hub switches routers and then through the firewall it is connected to the internet that's how people manage their internal networks as well as connected to the internet right so this is the main message that i wanted to give and the another key message that i wanted you all to remember is that the osi model right any any if you want two devices to talk to each other both have to speak same language very simple terms right no let's not because as we learn more things will become complicated for now let's see the simple things right when two device wants to talk to each other both have to know the same language and that is nothing but in telecom world it's called as protocols right a set of rules that you can uh, both both the uh, devices follow so they can speak with each other so if one device has to speak with another device if this device supports tcp protocol and this device supports tcp ip protocol suite right then it can understand otherwise it cannot understand so now all these protocols are developed based on some basic standard right and that was called as an osi model right so every protocol when you build you should make sure there is a pro, you know a application layer presentation layer session layer transport layer network layer data layer and mm. physical layer right every protocol stack that is built even in the 5g you will have to take care of all these layers and what are all the different things that you need to do in all these layers you have to take care of and it the the, the whole thing was set in the olden days it was called as an osi model right even today it is applicable but some people what they do is they kind of implement physical and application and session layer into one layer right application layer they call it as like for example https is a good protocol example right um, then uh, transport layer you all know tcp sctp is the transport layer ip layer you all know network layer is ip addresses data layer is all mac every computer has a mac right so so through the mac only your computer is uniquely identified right uh, first you think from the ip layer but in reality it's actually identified by the mac layer right the the mac of your uh, computer um and ip is a logical layer then you have a physical one right the physical one is the actual cable that connects uh, or the wireline wireline wireless that connects so this is the osi model i'm pretty sure if you are an engineer you would have already learned this and and it's important that you understand that and then the next message that i wanted to give you guys is well you know telecom had their own stuff they were doing voice then the tv guys had their own stuff they were providing tv then um, uh, internet guys they had their own network they were providing the internet and at some point of time they this data guy wants to provide voice cable guy wants to provide voice and internet and this all convergence started happening right and uh, this is a slide that basically tells you that convergence how it started happening from the data side right you started having skype uh, whatsapp and all those kind of things right whether it is a proprietary protocol or a or a standard based protocol doesn't really matter you started having the you, you know before you used the uh, network only for uh, internet browsing right and all of a sudden you started using the network for voice so that's how the data network evolved okay and uh, that's that that's what called as a you know voice over ip there is multiple protocols that enabled 
you to speak voice in the data network. You did not have to pick up a landline and start dialing the number to do voice, but you could actually start doing that in the data network. Right? <clears throat> so there was a number of protocols that, that helped you to do that. It's called as voice over IP. And then before the olden days, it used to be ATM, right? It used to be T1, T2, and ATM protocols, right? There was no IP. So now when when that those protocols had a lot of legacy, you know, OSA layer top level protocols. Now, if you wanted to transport those protocols on the IP, you got to do a lot of different things. So they tried to convert the olden days protocols to run on IP. You know, that journey was called a Citron journey. That was one life, right? Now it's all gone. Everything is pure IP from bottom all up. Okay. And even today, there are a lot of systems that are available. What you are actually seeing it uh, here, right? Uh, the, if you remember um, toll free number, you guys know toll free number. So what happens is you have a number. You don't know the destination number, right? You just call that toll free number. It goes to the SS7 network, right? And then it finds out who is the actual destination. What is the actual destination number? Let's say you call the Pizza Hut uh, 1-800 number. It goes to the signaling, right? SS7 networks and finds out the actual number of that Pizza Hut guy. And then he makes the call and then connects me to you. So the actual Pizza Hut guy's call is hidden. Phone number is hidden from you. That's a toll-free number, right? Oh, okay. Right? The prepaid number. Prepaid number is the same thing, right? Um, you know, so the point here, what I'm trying to make is that, you know, even in those cases, toll-free numbers and things like that, you know, all these, these, these technologies came into the picture. At that time, it was called as AIN. It's not artificial intelligence. It's called as, ad, what was that? Advanced Intelligence Net, Intelligent Network. So before you were doing only voice, now I can hide the number. I can show the calling party number in the called party phone display. So all those things you were intelligent things that you were able to do when you separated the signaling network from the actual voice network, right? Which you remember I kept telling you control plane and uh, and the user plane, right? So just wanted to make sure that you kind of understand that it's very very critical. Okay. Then the another most important thing is okay you had all these um, networks that are available, and um, there was uh, this sorry one second all the all the networks were available right now you need to connect all these network. Uh, you know, you have a central office, you have whatever, whatever, right? But you've got to connect all these things. So there is a transport network that's available, right? That connects, uh, there's an undersea transport network that connects, uh, right? There's so many transport networks are available and the transport networks also evolved. So these are all the things that we discussed uh, last time, right? In our last session, I just want to give you a recap. So those, whatever that we discussed in the last session is from the point of view of very basics, right? Thinking about cable networks, cable had their own uh, own own um, infrastructure, right? They had their own uh, CMTS, lot of devices that makes up the cable networks, uh, which which was uh, uh, giving you the streaming of the videos, right? Uh, you know, in olden days, Doordarshan and many <laughs> videos that we saw, right? And um, so so every every the point here is that cable had their own data, and every then everyone started coming together, and everyone started evolving the architecture to provide all the services. Cable guys, see today I have a cable in my home and I have a voice service from the same cable provider. I have the mobile service from the same cable provider. I have my um, home monitoring from the same cable provider. You guys understand what I'm saying? Um, so that's what it is. So I can go to the same thing, right? Um, the data provider and they can provide everything. So it's up, it's up to me to choose, but it was not like that before. So the point I wanted you to understand is how all these convergence happened is because of IP, more or less, right? Because of IP um, and, and the protocols and standards, everyone started adopting, making sure everyone can speak with everyone. And because of that, all these convergence happened and the network in, enabled this to you know anybody to speak to anyone whether you are calling from a data network service provider a voice call you can talk to someone else who is in the cable network service provider voice call with voice call i mean all these uh, beautiful things that has happened 
is mainly because of that. But if you take, like, for example, can I call from the Skype to WhatsApp? No. From WhatsApp to Google Meet? No, I cannot, right? That's because yeah. they speak their own protocol. They speak their own language. And others do not understand and they do not understand others' language. That's the thing. Is that is that clear? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now let's uh, move on. Uh, some some interesting topics. Again, I wanted to kind of set all these things because everything is going to play an important role for 5G. Um, whatever that we are going to learn together in the study group, right? Um, if you know, we we kind of refreshed our last session. Now we'll get into some new concepts. Uh, again, I want to repeat. Everything is going to play an important role in 5G. Now let's start with cloud. Very basics, right? What is cloud? I mean, you guys work on so many cloud uh, today and you build your expertise, blah, 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 blah. But what is cloud? Cloud Why is uh, basically a data centers from where we can get uh, resources. So it's located in somewhere. But uh, if you want to evolve our uh, infrastructure, so they can provide us. So that's that, a that good is a... That's, But if you think, right? The simplicity server, server connected over internet uh, in different geographic locations. You can say. Yeah, good. But if you think very practically, I before I was having a, a company, okay, so I had yeah. all the servers, everything inside my company. Yeah. I owned everything. I invested everything. I owned everything. So only the big companies can afford to even give computer to the employees, <laughs> right? Not startups. Uh, nobody can do that. Then that's the disruption happened, right? So somebody came, some innovator came and he said, why should every company have all their servers and everything inside their company? I am going to put it in some common place and I'm going to rent it out. That's it. <laughs> Very simple. That's how the cloud came into the picture. Yeah. Right? Take the server and put it in some common place and rent it out to the different people. Now, when you want to do that, you need to manage that, right? If you're going to rent it to multiple people, you need to manage that. That's when all the software that supports everything came into the picture, which allows today, whatever that you see in Amazon, uh, everything that allows you to manage, it's all came after that. But the basic foundation is you took the servers and then you rented it, rented it out to others. Then things started evolving. And uh, what was the advantage is that, see, if I'm a startup, before, if I wanted to do something, I have to have millions and millions of dollars to do that, right? Set up the servers and establish, give computers. And now I don't need, if I have like $50 in a month, I can get a server and I can, uh, Put that server and I can ask, I can have two or three engineers to launch my website and I can start my company. $50, $100 today, right? Was not the case uh, in, in olden days, right? So that's that's on the more practical sense. But I wanted to go into a little bit uh, theoretical, uh, you, know, uh, you know, sense, right? In the sense, what happened was initially the cloud came into picture mainly because of the enterprise IT and web. That's the that's the thing, right? Um, the IT guys they wanted um, to reduce the cost, and um, you know, um, website wants to be launched in the common place and things like that. Before the website was never launched in the cloud, it was launched in your office server, and then the public IP was assigned so people can actually come and you know get your um, website from your server. It was never launched uh, in Amazon, Google, but today, nowadays, everything is launched in Amazon, Google, right? So that's the thing. So what happened is when, you know, if you look at this particular diagram, right? This, you know, when you talk about cloud, I told, I told you, take a server from the company and put it out in the common place and rent it. Now, you, if you keep all the servers and the associated software within the enterprise, it's called as private cloud. These are all some new names, but the concept is the same, right? Um, so if you want, if there is a community, right? The community meaning if more three or four uh, groups coming together and doing something together, then you wanted to um, have some servers dedicated only for them, then it is a community cloud on the practical sense. 
right? Then you have a hybrid cloud because the enterprises did not want to put everything into the uh, public cloud. So they said, I will put uh, something in private, something in public, and something I want to keep it in between. So they put some servers in between and then started managing, putting some stuff, applications and stuff there. That became the hybrid cloud. And then public cloud is pretty much the public cloud, right? That is like Amazon, right? I can rent and I can do stuff. Now the management and everything came into the picture and then a lot of management softwares nowadays are available, blah, blah, blah. So now what's more important for you to understand here is that these are all the terms that came into the picture because all these things are going to come back to you in 5G. I'll tell you when it comes, right? Um, this, these terms kind of came into the picture, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, nowadays even function as a service. <laughs> See how much they are simplifying for us it's actually a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. Because we don't know what exactly is happening inside. We can't, you know, I know that the rest of the things is taken care by, you know, uh, it's the same thing. In olden days, I used to do the assembly language programming. Now I do, after that C, C++, now I do all visual. I don't even know what exactly is happening. If I go and ask nowadays a good software developer, to explain me what happens on the interpreter, what's the difference, difference, the difference uh, between the interpreter and compiler, you will not be able to explain. It does not even know what happens inside. Yeah. Right? So what happens is, by doing that, the programmer nowadays is, which is also a good thing and a bad thing, right? The good thing is, he, he need not have to know anything, the details, but he focuses on what he needs to do. Right from the application point of view, which is a good thing. But not knowing what's happening inside and doing an application is also a dumb thing to do, right? If you know exactly what's happening inside, you can optimize the application in such a way that you can build a solid product. But now the providers who are abstracting the details from you are telling you that they are optimizing it internally, right? So you're blindly taking it and you're doing it, right? So, I mean, it, case by case, there is an advantage, there is a disadvantage, right? There is no generic uh, thing. But what's important for you to understand is after this cloud came into the picture, uh, these are the some of the terms came into the picture. So people first started renting only the servers. Then they said, okay, I'm going to rent you the platforms, right? Like OS and things like that. They put everything inside and then they started renting the platforms, which had uh, you know, operating system, programming language, tools and frameworks that are available. Then they said, you know, the cost of platform as a service is obviously higher than the infrastructure as a service, right? Then, then there's the software as a service. A lot of people, they said, okay, you know, I will provide you my application, you subscribe it and you will do it, software as a service, right? Now, nowadays it's function as a service, then you don't even have to worry about programming language, you don't even have to worry about anything. All you have to do is call a function, um, that will like, for example, if you want to make a payment uh, module, call the function, I will take care of everything. <laughs> so see that uh, level of abstractions that's happening, but it's important that you understand this, um, right? Everything as it became everything as a service, subscription model, everything, all these companies like Google, everything started, uh, you know, uh, the birth of them is because of this, right? If there's no cloud, these companies are not at all, they don't exist today, right? And, and even the SAPs, uh, and those were they, in olden days they were doing it on the on-premise hardware. Nowadays they're doing it in cloud, like Salesforce, SAP, and all these people, right? If there is no cloud, um, you know, it's it's not they, they cannot be what what they are today, right? Even the Zoom, the Microsoft Teams that we are talking, everything is running in the cloud. Okay, this is very important that you guys understand. The next concept that I wanted you all so far so good, right? Uh, the next concept that I wanted you all to understand is, see, I told you about separating the signaling and the voice, okay? So nowadays it's called as control plane and user plane in a wireless world, right? Signaling is a control plane and the actual voice data, whatever that you do is all the user plane, okay? Now, there is another concept came in, you know, when you started doing cloud, right? Uh, a concept came in, which is called as an SDN. Software defined network. Before what happened was the router had all the software in it. Right? Both control and user, everything happened. Like setting up the connection is a control, right? 
user is actually transferring the data is the user plane. So setting up the connection and transferring uh, the data, everything happened within that particular device, like for example, router in the transport side. In the transport, transport means what? The devices and the cables that connects you, that's the transport. You remember the first slide, the switching transmission, right? And then transmission is nothing but your transport, right? Um, so hub switches and everything that comes together is it's what makes you as a, uh, okay. So now, what they said was in the transport network, you had a router which did connection and also which did transfer of the data. Now they said, why should I? Uh, same concept, right? The in the telecom world, uh, you know, um, the the signaling and the and the separation of the signaling and the voice. They say it's same concept here. Why can't I separate the management is done by something else? and the tra data transfer is done by something else. That's what is SDN is all about, right? If you look at this, this picture here, you had a core network, right? Traditionally, and then then then, then you had, you know, switches and the servers and everything, rack, rack, end row, core network. This is how it was, right? And if you look at the data plane and control plane in this picture, so, so the control plane is setting up the connection, right? IP address, I want to transfer the data, setting up the connection, that's the control plane. And then you are a data plane, the data plane is um, is, is sent uh, between the routers, switches, you know, and the servers, the data plane is sent, right? This is how it happens uh, in, in, in olden days. Now with SDN, what happened is that if you see this data plane, data plane is transferred, but the control plane that you have here, it is actually managed by the central application this is the most important thing that i wanted you to understand okay so this is again it started only in the enterprise because it's an it right it's still not telecom right it's still it so in it they started separating the data plane and the control plane and then they wanted to build their it network more effectively whether it is a lan van and whatever they wanted to build the network effectively so in olden days in the routers and all right they used to have these protocols bgpp and all these protocols rip these are all the different protocols that are used for the transport network to set up the transport connection okay connecting two people between countries and things like that right the transport connection so all these protocols, control protocols and user protocols, everything is done by the devices. So the enterprises, what they said is, I mean, why should I use, let me, let me have, it's very difficult to manage, right? So they said, let me have one central place that can control everything, the data movement, right? So that's what the SDN is all about. So if you wanted to remember uh, what is SDN in one single place, see if one single uh, uh, statement, right? Uh, the same thing for cloud if you wanted to remember in one single statement i would say cloud is nothing but in a layman way right moving out the hardware and the management of it from on premise to off premise uh, is and renting it is is what the cloud is all about when you talk about sdn at a very high level separating the control and data plane in the transport Right, so that's that's what is the most important thing, right? Separating the control plane and user plane in the transport network, and there are open sources that are available. It's called as Open Daylight. If you wanted to read it out, right? Uh, open Daylight is a is a open source that that is an SDN open source that allows you to do that. Okay, so but again, it it you know if you think about it, what is the advantage of this? Advantage of this is. Um, you know, you can uh, management becomes easy. You can scale easily. Uh, you can add more um, dumb servers that can route the user plane controlled by the intelligent server, right? Um, and and now the intelligent server controlling all these dumb servers, which is forwarding the user plane. That means your voice and my voice, right? Whatever, as an example, when we both are talking, um, if if this control plane wants to manage multiple boxes that connects you and me when we are talking. Um, then you this this control plane should be able to manage multiple. So then you need to have a protocol between them, right? So the protocol was open flow. Okay. So day, daylight is the open source, and the protocol between the control plane and the user plane that controls and establishes the transport path, right? That protocol is called as open flow. Okay? Just to give you a perspective, everything is protocol. Remember, without protocol, you cannot really communicate with each other. So the second, the most important thing is the SDN. Okay, 
all you are trying to do here is the trying to separate the uh, transport layer uh, related um, uh, control plane to the data plane. That's the most important thing. If you have to remember in one single word. Now let's look at cloud plus XDN, SDN. Let, let's put our brain together, right? I just created this particular slide to kind of bring our brain together. So you have this wireless network, right? Uh, the antennas that are out there and fixed DSL lines that are out there. Then you have a packet and optical transport that connects the whole, uh, uh, you know, the, I'm, I'm, I'm the user behind the wireless network and the fixed network. So if someone is calling, let's say Vikas is calling me, I'm in my PSTN line. What happens is it goes to this radio access and then it comes to this transport and then blah, 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 and then comes back to the fixed access. And then we both are talking, right? So this is an access network. This is an access network. This is my transport network. And the transport network is IP or optical. Doesn't matter, right? But this is my transport network. Now I wanted to control the transport network um, uh, from a central location. So you have a SDN controller. So this SDN controller takes the instruction from the upper layers, right? Forget about now what are the upper layers, right? But some upper layer which tells the SDN controller, hey, Vikas is trying to talk to Khadar. Please connect Vikas to Khadar between uh, by connecting all these dumb switches between his house to Khadar's house so that they can establish a path. They both can talk. So someone is going to tell this guy to do that. Okay. So when you make a call, when Vikas is making a call to me, so that is controlled by someone here. Just imagine right now that is someone here who knows what exactly to tell to this SDN controller. So SDN controller can establish the transport path between me and Vikas. So that's what it is, right? So now this SDN control, this the some guy telling me here, uh, SDN controller, and uh, and it it has set up the path, which is good. And who is that some guy who is telling this SDN controller? He is nothing but the guy who is managing the call between the Vikas and Khadar. When Vikas is trying to make a call to Khadar, this guy is managing that call between the uh, Vikas and Khadar. And that guy knows what he needs to actually tell this guy so that the path is established. OK, so that guy can sit in cloud. You guys understand what I'm saying? And for now, you understand that guy here who is sitting in the cloud is nothing but a 4G network, 5G network, or even um, you know the Wi-Fi network or whatever, right? The, the 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 network application network for now. But we will see as things evolve, right? How all these things, how all these network components, like which network components sit here, which network components sit here, which network components sit in cloud. We will understand all that. In, in, in our future session. But what's important for you to understand today is cloud and SDN. SDN is mainly focused on transport. And this SDN controller gets the um, instruction from someone and sets up the transport network between me and Vikas. As simple as that. OK, perfect. Now let's go to one additional concept here, NFV, because all these things you are going to hear it in, in, in 5G. If you don't know this, you will not understand 5G at all. OK, so the next most important thing is NFV. What is NFV? So this is a concept originate. See, the first concept, which is a cloud, and the second concept, which is an SDN, it is all originated from the enterprises, adopted by others, right? Uh, NFV is the concept that was originated from the service providers. You know, their main thinking process is this. I am buying the network equipments from Cisco's of the world, Nokia's of the world, and Ericsson's of the world, and they, they sell me those equipments, and it is very expensive for me to buy those equipments and build the network. Why it is expensive for me? Because in olden days, people were very happy to pay me $50 and $100 and even $500 to have monthly voice call. Well, people don't even want to pay me because they are using free voice calls. Now, how can I continue to build a network that is going to cost me so much of money uh, and I don't earn that money? This is the problem. Right? And I'm, I'm, I'm explaining all these in a very simplest term, right? So in order to kind of solve that problem, 
um, what they said is they, they, they wanted to not depend on the hardware that has been sold by the vendors and they wanted to use a commercial off the shelf hardware and they want only software from the vendors like Nokia's, Ericsson's and so on so they can reduce the cost. So when it comes to NFV, all you have to remember is separating hardware from the software. That's what is NFV definition is. I don't want to go and buy a hardware from a vendor. I wanted to buy a hardware from HP. Okay. And sorry, I don't want to go and buy a hardware plus software from a vendor who gives a packaged solution. But instead of that, I want to buy a hardware separately from HP and I want to buy a software separately from Cisco and I wanted to do it so I can reduce the cost. Okay. Right, very simple. That's what is the NFE is network function virtualization, right? Um, so it's, it's, it's very simple separating the hardware from the software. That is all the network function virtualization is all about. Got it? So that's what you see it in this diagram. In the olden days, they were selling like this, right? Session border controller, you buy it from a um, from a vendor who provides hardware and software, blah, 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 blah. Now they wanted to move it in a way that the enterprises or the operators, they will buy their own servers, they will maintain their own servers on-premise or maybe rent it from Amazon in the cloud, doesn't matter. See the connection I'm establishing, right? They can have their own servers and management software in their premise or they can rent it from Amazon. And then from the vendors, traditional vendors, get the softwares and then put it in here. Okay, now if you see, connect this cloud plus SDN plus NFE, right? So, uh, you know, Vikas is calling Kadar and transport network is established by the SDN control plane, instructed by this guy, right? So that we know that cloud plus SDN coming together. Now, this, Network here, right? This this is the commercial cloud where the applications are running, like web app or whatever. Let's say, okay. Now, this wireless and fixed network that was maintained by Rogers, Tellers in India, right? Uh, everyone. This was always was like this classic network appliances. Okay. So, if you think about it, the cloud, Amazon, Google, and everyone came in, and everything became virtualized and now containerized. Now, the same enterprise guys, they separated the control plane and user plane, so I can talk to talk with Vikas. But the problem is the wireless guys, right? They still had this circle in between from the traditional vendors, and they were not taking advantage of what the enterprise guys, SDN, whatever that they are doing, and, uh, and whatever the cloud that they were doing, they were not taking advantage of that. And, and that is why this network function virtualization, a concept that they did so that they can softwareize this circle. All the network functions. What is a network function? Network function is nothing but device. Like router is a network function. Firewall is a network function. In the wireless side, um, you know, MME, P gateways, all these are the network functions. Okay, so before they used to buy this from Cisco's and all these different people. Now they don't want to do that. They just wanted to buy software from them. They have their own hardware and they wanted to put it on their own hardware. The software into their own hardware. Now they can put this network function into their on-premise cloud, private cloud, or they can rent it from Microsoft and they can put this network function into the public cloud. Like recently you would have seen AT&T partnering with Microsoft to do exactly this. Okay, so now I wanted to kind of share something to really think about, right? So if you think about cloud, what do you always think? You always think website, web apps, maybe, you know, using different technologies like AR, VR, and all those things. This is what you think, right? All our end user applications and web applications. That's what you think when you think about this top, top um, cloud. You don't really think about firewalls. You don't think about MMEs, P gateways, and all these devices that makes up the network. You don't think about that as a normal person, right? Now, 
the transformation that's happening is you are going to start thinking about all these network functions and the devices as a software, as an app. You see what I mean? And if you start thinking that, then what happens is you can softwareize everything. Right? So you can achieve three things that we, we said. Number one, you can softwareize everything and you can put it in any clouds, private, hybrid, on public cloud. So that's cloud concept we learned. And the second concept that we learned is STN. We can manage the, we can separate the control plane and user plane on the transport side and manage the connections between the user. And the third thing is, I can softwareize all these devices also, NFV. So it's very important that you understand the differences between these three and also how all these things coming together. I can put this, NFV is nothing but a private cloud where you can run the network functions. Now you can run the same network functions into the public cloud that is in the top. And when you are running the network functions and the apps in interchangeably in both these places, you can do that. When the data is transported between the apps and also transported between the users that are using those apps, you need a transport network. And the transport network, you do it using the ASDN. See, all these concepts comes together. It is very important that you understand this. Because this is what is going to come back at you all the time when you are learning the 5G. If you don't know this, you will, you will not be able to understand the, the 5G aspect of it. Okay. And then last slide today for today. Okay. And now these, these, whether it is an NFV or cloud, you can use it using OpenStack, cloud stack, containers, all those are the infrastructure softwares, right? That kind of helps you to run and manage the hardware and run the applications on top of that. And that applications can be a web applications or, or any applications. Now, as a summary, okay, one, yeah, as a summary, right? What I wanted to share with you is that cloud, what does it do? It's a rapid service and application innovation by third party. That is what is happening, right? With that we talked about air VR and blah, 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 blah. NFV, it allows to reduce the capex and opex because I'm not going to buy big, big hardwares from everyone and I'm going to put by my, have my own hardware. I'm going to put the software. It allows to reduce the capex and opex. You know, I told you service providers, they cannot continue to afford to buy the big, big hardware piece with the software from big vendors, right? So they, and, and because we are not paying them more, so they need to really balance it. So NFV is all about reducing the capex space and power consumption, separating the hardware from the software is NFV. SDN is separating control plane from user plane on the transport. What does it do? It enables abstraction. The abstraction enables faster innovation. So end of the day, it's very important that you understand the definitions of these and how all these things come together. It's very important. Okay, so what we spoke today, you know, if you think about it in our study group, what we have learned together is we have learned together the basics of networks, how all these networks converge together. Number two, we started learning a basic fundamentals of the differences between cloud, NFV, and SDN. And now what we need to learn before we enter into the cellular network is, you know, next study group we will learn, right? We need to Cloud, you all know, we don't need to get into the depth of it, right? Amazon and everyone, you know, you get VMs, you get containers, you have number of tools to manage. But what you don't know is this NFV, right? And how does it actually map to, um, you know, how, how it is actually done, a private cloud is done. So what we will do is we will try to understand a little bit more about this NFV architecture and uh, in our next session. And then what we will try to do is connect that with edge computing, then we enter into the cellular world. And then we will understand the 5G, um, you know, the basics of cellulars, right? Uh, 2G, 3G and differences and things like that. And then when we get into the 5G, we will understand the 5G. And then from our fourth or fifth session onwards, we will start learning Magma together, open source together, right? So that it makes sense for you, right? Um, instead of you starting from nowhere, you understand the big picture and you're getting in, you know, you understand the overall picture and you're getting into the magma, you know exactly what you're going to learn in the magma. Does that make sense to everyone, um, uh, team? Yes, it does. Yes. Thank you. Yeah.
So, yeah, the, this is from very basic. So yeah, it uh, helps a lot. Yeah, Thank it's, you it's so very much. important. It's very important. You think this is basic, but in 5G, all these things you need to know. Without yeah, yeah, definitely, right? definitely. So the, in 5G, they will say network functions. So they will say NFV. They will say network slicing. But what it is, you won't know if you know. In 5G, they say control plane and user plane separation. You won't know what it is if you don't understand what is SDN, right? They will say, let's install network function in private cloud, public cloud. If you don't, you, you don't know. You, you can't understand that if you don't understand what is the what is cloud, right? And they say, let's uh, let's install, let's put VNF in the container. You won't understand what it is unless you don't know what is NFV. What is hypervisor? Right? They'll say let's uh, let's do um, uh, you know um, uh, automated um, analytics and AI in uh, in radio. You wouldn't you wouldn't you know in radio intelligent controller. You wouldn't understand what it is if you don't know what is analytics and AI. How it is related to the network? How how it is actually managed? You wouldn't know, right? So in order for you to know that, you need to understand some basics. It's very important, right? And, and we have gone through some of the basics. You, you know, you might think these are all the basics. All these basics will become so complicated as we evolve. You see, you will understand what I mean, right? Yeah. Um, all these basics will become so complicated uh, when everything is coming together. So that's the beauty, right? I uh, want, wanted you all to understand. 5G is all about not one thing. 5G is all about multiple things coming together. AR, VR, AI, analytics, network. NFV, cloud, SDN, edge computing, disaggregation, mm. everything coming together. If you don't understand the definitions of these, how all these things coming together, you won't understand nothing, right? Moving forward. And if you look at the future of our 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 life, in a very simplest word, uh, in simplest way of explaining, three things going to come together: physical world, human world. Digital world. Physical world is all the hardware, sensors, blah, blah, blah. Digital world is making a software copy of that. How do you manage the physical world from the digital world? Third one is human world. How you can connect that with the human emotions? How I can make a decision like how human would make a decision? In order to do all these three things, you need to have a good understanding of all the different technologies, how it is going to come together to make these three things happen. Otherwise, you will understand nothing from the big picture point of view. It's very important that we go through this process and it cannot be learned overnight, but at least we need to have a basic foundation of these things to coming to that, that comes together, then rest will become easy for us. OK, so we are four minutes outside of our time. We always respect the time in learning together, and I really trust that you learn something together. My kind request now is uh, once uh, you know uh, the the volunteers are going to send you the private link. I, I trust you are all in this uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, the private links mm. will be posted there, and if not, um, you know we'll also probably create a decoding 5G WhatsApp group, right? Um, uh, Mickey or or Shad, if someone can help me to do that, or um, yeah. you know. Uh, some of me, can you ask some of our volunteers to do that? I would appreciate it. Let's create a WhatsApp group. Let's, uh, you know, 5G decoding, decoding 5G WhatsApp group, and let's come together and let's, next to get, let's learn this together. And again, my kind request is next time when you come, bring one more person with you to learn. And before they come, ask them to review these two videos before they come to the third. Yeah. One more person that I wanted you to come uh, bring, right? You have to force him to. Uh, come pretty much right. That's how the gra grassroots movement. I don't want you guys to force everyone, but each person has to force one person. Create interest on one person, and you have to bring in. Okay, and with that, let's see you guys in two weeks. And I will post this presentation right uh, into Microsoft Teams, or I will send it to um, uh, you know our, some of our volunteers who can distribute it to you, so that you can go through this before coming. Right? And even the future slides. So it will become easy for us to kind of understand and learn together. So with that, let's close the session for today and uh, see you in two weeks then. Take care. Thanks, Kada. Bye, guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye, everyone.
Thanks. Bye.